Things at Collinwood are as strange as ever. Angelique is a vampire. Her victims include the now deceased and undead Tom Jennings, who had a stake run through his heart by the former vampire and current unwilling victim of Barnabas. Joe Haskell is also her victim. Tom Jennings' twin brother, Chris, has come to town. And there are two man-made creatures running amok, enthralled by a demon. What else can happen? So for starters, how many times can a guy get attacked by a vampire and not develop some sort of immunity? This is like the third time Barnabas has been bitten by a vampire. Seriously, dude? Seriously? <sighs> okay, so Eve is brought to life by uh, Jeffster. Barnabas and Julia. She's totally evil and annoying AF. I don't particularly like this character and I generally fast forward through her scenes. Okay, so they use the ghost of Lutetia Borgia, who was a murderer that somehow knew Peter Bradford circa 1796, which is causing Jeffster to remember who he truly is. Uh, so there's a lot of time traveling ghosts. Anyway, um, he's taken back in time right after he marries Victoria, and Victoria ends up going back in time with him. Somehow. There's a lot of different forms of time travel on this show. Gets real confusing-like. So Barnabas Doc rounds it back to 1796 via Professor Stokes helping him via I Ching, and he aids Victoria in escaping from being hung. Not illegally, he actually gets Angelique to go on trial and say that she was the witch. It's actually kind of sweet. So she is back, like, Cassandra Leak is back in 1796 as a punishment. And not quite sure how she got there. It's not really explained. And uh, I guess he's now not the victim of a vampire. That, what? Writers? must have forgotten some things and just moved on. I guess I will too. Um, so she magically appears there. She's not a vampire anymore. Who cares about continuity? Uh, Bam Barnabas relives like the worst few days of his life in the 18th century. Yay. Barnabas returns to 1967-68. I'm not really sure. Um, Roger is away for work, and Barnabas is living in the main house, which is so much more fun. And we get to meet my faves character, Chris Jennings, who is the twin brother for the recently to twice deceased Tom Jennings, and the cousin to the hospitalized Joe Haskell. Chris has a little lycanthropy problem, and, uh, you know, he's, he's really pulling that reluctant just just devastated grieved harrowing talbot kind of thing from the wolfman and it's deeply depressing um he he's just in agony over his condition and he starts dating carolyn which will end up being kind of weird later on but i'll get to that and he ends up taking up residency in the caretaker's cottage on the Collinwood. Uh, because his little sister Amy is staying at the main house. So Barnabas and Julia are trying to work to help him cure his lycanthropy condition. Uh, he is not at all hopeful about it, and neither is Julia. She's kind of a naysayer. I guess after failing to fix Barnabas from his vampirism when all he needed was a blood transfusion, I wouldn't be too confident in Julia either. Anyway. Uh, effing blood transfusion. So, Elizabeth was cursed by Chris Angelique, and for some reason that didn't go away like all of her other curses did, because again, continuity is non-existent, <laughs> and she believes that she's going to be buried alive, which she ends up being buried alive, and she's, in, she's buried for like a solid two or three weeks, so, yeah, non-zombie zombies, we're not doing zombies yet. Okay, so she ends up coming back, and they, they get her out, and then she hires Maggie Evans to be the new governess, since, you know, Victoria Winters disappeared into the past, and we never hear from her again. Although there is a line dropped later on that she committed suicide, so... Yay. 
I'll get to that later on. So, speaking of David and Amy, which I wasn't, but now I am, they're pulling, like, a turn of the screw and playing this game with these two ghosts, Quentin Collins and Beth Chavez, and they're, uh, they take over the house, and it becomes creepy AF, and they get, the kids get possessed, and then, uh, Roger returns home, and the family has to vacate the main house and go live with Barnabas in the old house, except for David, who's completely, fully possessed and is dying in the main house. So Barnabas again uses I Ching with the help of Julia and Professor Stokes to, uh, contact Quentin Collins. However, he ends up body hopping back in time to his 1897 body that is... Uh, enchained in the coffin in the mausoleum. So now we're going back in time again. Let's do it! Due to my excitement about time travel, I forgot to say we need a Moon Knight movie, and thank you so, so much for watching.